Okay, guys. This is the other segment I told you about. To um, thirty, we're redoing thirty-five from yesterday. This is thirty-five, but I have to stop short of an hour each time because YouTube changed the rules on us. Okay, so I want to continue on. Remember, we talked about how um, because of the giants, because they had uh, molested mankind, because they had molested God's creation. Hence, then, we're coming to the dinosaurs. And, no, the planet ain't been here 200 million years. And nobody's going to convince me of that. I just go out on faith on that one. But the dinosaurs, that was the result of what the giants did to creation. Okay? Because on that ark that came shortly thereafter... I assure you, it just isn't possible that the dinosaurs were on the ark with the other creatures we know of that would have been there. It wouldn't have happened. There's no way. Okay, I'm, 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 I'm just stating a fact. It didn't happen. The ark was not too much difference in size to the, what, what we have as the Queen Mary. So you picture a couple of rafters, long necked dinosaurs, and every other thing that was walking around at that day? No. And do you really think Noah and, and, and uh, Mrs. Noah would have felt comfortable around those? No. All right, but I digress, and I, I don't want. I want to stick with facts here. Okay. Anyway, we know because the Lord had said because man had corrupted his way means what God had intended for the earth, what He had intended by the garden, what He had intended for man was it didn't happen because of what happened in the garden it all started from there all started wrong choice wrong tree now having said that i want to first this time uh share some scriptures about keeping the commandments now i didn't do this yesterday didn't even get to this she uh, sheet yesterday now, the reason I want to start this sheet now is because of what we're going to be going through in Jude and Revelations. And mind you, I just skimmed those books. Okay? Because I wanted to get this message across. So, I want to go through this. Okay? I'm not going to do every one of them because we don't have enough time for that. But I do want to do as many as I can. And this is the Lord speaking. These are all basically New Testament as far as I can see. Okay? I... I could do Old Testament, but I think New Testament is what most of us are going to want to digest, okay? Because people are just in the New Testament, okay? So, but remember, the Old Testament and the New Testament hand in hand. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you, John 15, 7. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and I abide in his love, saith the Lord. That's in John 15, 10. This is all the Lord speaking, guys. If you are my friends, if you do whatever I, you are my friends, if you do whatever I command you, John 15, 14. What did God say to Adam? Don't eat this tree. Don't eat of it. To obey is better than sacrifice. Hmm? But unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth, but they, but, Obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath. That's in Romans 2, verse 8. These are all keeping his words. Okay, guys? But I beseech you, brothers, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned, and avoid them. Romans 16, 17. <clears throat> Circumcision is nothing, and uncircumcision is nothing, but the keeping of the commandments of God. 1 Corinthians seven nineteen. Even so has the Lord ordained that they which preach the gospel should live of the gospel. 1 Corinthians 9.14 What is it we ask the Lord to do upon asking for his Holy Spirit? To walk in his what? To walk in his ways. Now I praise you, brother, that you remember me in all things and keep the ordinances, that means the commandments, as I delivered them to you. 1 Corinthians 11.2 in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is 2 Thessalonians 1 3. That is the end time, guys. Remember Sodom and Gomorrah. Therefore, brothers, stand fast and hold the traditions which you have been taught, whether by word or our epistle, which is our letters. 
2 Thessalonians second, uh, 2, 16. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves, James 1, 22. Being hearers of the word only is doing exactly what's being preached today. We're not under the law. That's what they consider this as. But we're under grace. We're liberty. We're justified in all things. That is not what the book of James is saying. And a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, even in those that stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. 1 Peter 2.8. You see, guys, people just don't understand what it is that the Lord has been giving, okay? What he did on that hill, what he did on that cross. We have to embrace what he did. You know, if a group of us were to embrace what he did, how, how many promises would be fulfilled? How many things would the Lord says, my arms are stretched out, guys. He says, my arms are stretched out. I'm trying to help you. You got to listen to what it says, guys, okay? For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end of them that obey not the gospel? That obey not the gospel of God. 1 Peter 4.18 if the righteous are scarcely saved, where shall the sinner appear? And hereby we know that we know him if we keep his commandments. You know that you know him if you do what he says. That's what it says right there. 1 John 2 verse 3. He that says I know him and keeps not his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. 1 John 2 4. Whosoever keeps his word, in him truly is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. 1 John 2, 5. If we keep his words, guys, the love of God is perfected in us through him. Think about that. That's a promise, guys. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. 1 John 3, 23. I read all of these first page here. Now, I would like to share a few more, if I might, before we get into Jude. <clears throat> Woe to the rebellious children, saith the Lord. This is Isaiah, and he is speaking about this time, guys. Woe to the rebellious children, saith the Lord, that take counsel, but not of me, and that cover with the covering, but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin. Covering. What's that sound like? We're justified to do all things. We're under grace. We're at liberty. What's it sound like? That take counsel, but not of me, and that cover with a covering, but not of my spirit. That they may add sin to sin. That's Isaiah 30, verse 1. If I had, this is Jesus talking. If I had not come and spoken to them, they had not had sin, but now they have no cloak for their sin. John 15, 22. They will deceive everyone his neighbor and will not speak the truth. They have taught their tongue to speak lies and weary themselves to commit sin. Their habitation is in the midst of deceit, and through deceit they refuse to know me, saith the Lord. They refuse to know me. What happens when the Lord dwells in the believer? What happens when the Father and Son dwells in the believer? What happens when part of that spirit of grace dwells in the believer all things are made new the old stuff passes away that's what happens for the grace of God that has brought salvation has appeared to all men teaching us well, excuse me for the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Titus 2, 11-13. Teaching us, the Holy Ghost teaches us that denying ungodliness, don't do the bad stuff, and the worldly lust, don't do those things. We should live rightly and godly in this present world. Titus 2, 11 through 13. And if I might. 
Just a few guys. It is hard to kick up against the pricks and impossible to contend with God's word concerning truth. The reason I said that is because this is what led to the earth being destroyed by the flood. This is what led to Sodom, Gomorrah, and the other cities being destroyed by the Lord's wrath brimstone and fire it was their cities of ash and this is what's going to lead to destruction of the world at the end this particular thing should ring loud and clear behold you trust in lying words that cannot profit will you steal murder commit adultery swear falsely burn incense unto Baal walk after other gods whom you do not know and then come and stand before me in this house. You're the house. You. Where's the Holy Spirit of God, guys? Where? You. Where's the tabernacle that the Lord God said he would, dwell, he would dwell in his people? Who is that? That's you. Houses of clay, tabernacles. You again. Baptism of the Holy Spirit. Where do you think it goes? In you. I will walk in them. I will be with them. They shall be my people. I will be their God, saith the Lord. Those that were clean escape from those that live in error. Do you remember these things? So listen to this again. And try to listen to it at, from, the, from, the, from the point that you are the house. Behold, you trust in lying words that cannot profit. Be careful what you hear, the leaven of the Pharisees. Will you still murder and commit adultery and swear falsely and burn incense unto Baal and walk up for after other gods whom you do not know? And come and stand before me in this house, or the house, which is called by my name, who calls us? And then say, we are delivered to do all of these abominations. We are delivered to do them. We've been saved, so we're justified. We're at liberty. We're under grace. We can do these things. Is it ringing there? And I say this because it should ring in everybody, all of us, including me. Am I, am I right, guys? Is this house which is called by my name become a den of robbers in your eyes? Behold, even I've seen it, saith the Lord. Jeremiah 7, 8 through 11, and he was speaking about the salvation story, guys. Um, I'm not going to go in there too far in these, okay, guys? However, I do want to start again leaving off where we left off, and I want to briskly go through these once again. And because the way of the Lord was corrupted upon the earth, First time this world was destroyed was by a flood. Nothing that breathed through the nostrils, nothing that, that had air to live, lived. Everything in the oceans survived, but not anything above. And then came Sodom and Gomorrah. God left those cities there on purpose. He didn't wipe them out. He didn't destroy them. He left them there. He destroyed them, but he left them there as a warning of what happens if you choose a life of sin and corruption. He left it there on purpose for a warning, guys. Ron Wyatt was the one that discovered these cities. I encourage you to look at some of his stuff, guys, truly. The Lord used him in a mighty way, and two angels appeared to him before his death. You can just touch any part of those cities and it just crumbles to dust. That's a warning. Now, for there are certain men crept in underwears. Now, this is in Jude chapter 1, verse 4. We've already seen this, okay? But there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness, 
Now my sister and my son looked up that word. It is not a nice word and it's not good. Personal desire, we'll just keep it at that. And denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus the Christ. Ungodly means, means and I, 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 you will find myself, I will explain things. Okay, remember I had four kids growing up. Ungodly men means exactly what it says. Ungodly men means pe teachers preaching something that just isn't right. Or preachers who just don't know that they're preaching things that are actually trying to give you an excuse to do something. Guys, you cannot condone sin. We can't not just accept it. We have to fight against it. And there's only one way you win the battle, and that's through Christ the Lord and the Father of all mercies. Chapter, verse 5, I'm starting at verse 5. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though you once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that did not believe. Now listen up. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> I didn't remember much of it. God sent the shepherd into Egypt. And don't, guys, Sharon, don't say, David, let's not go there again. You've been to Egypt too much. No, listen, there's a point. God sent the shepherd to Egypt. A shepherd. He told the Pharaoh, let him go. It took ten times, but Pharaoh finally saw the light that day and let him go. Although, albeit, there was more to come. It was a shepherd that led him out. You get where I'm going with this, right? So the shepherd leads him out, gets him through the, the desert, through the scorpions, through the snakes. Leads him along that narrow way. Gets him through that body of water, though be it, the enemy's coming up behind him wanting to kill him all. So that shepherd puts that rod over that body of water. It splits open. Oh man, would I like to have seen that. That's how the, the entire nation got baptized, I think. Remember, they believed in the shepherd. The shepherd led him out of Egypt. Got him through the desert. We all go through our deserts. You remember what I said? They went down in that body of water and they went right back up. That is baptism. And the Spirit leading them all the way. They crossed over to the promised land, but not the promised land that we think. They were before God's mountain. Now the enemy was destroyed. We all know how they got washed up. Don't you worry about it. The Lord takes care of those trying to hurt you. Okay? You, we will come up against things, guys. If you got a call in your life, the Lord's going to see you right through it. Don't you worry about it. Don't you worry about it. You know, just ignore it. Now, they get over there by Mount Sinai. Moses goes up to get the law. He's gone for 40 days, 40 nights. They decide to turn. Now, guys... I know we sell the stories a lot, but we really got to listen to this stuff. While Moses is up, communing with the Father, who had just showed his magnificence, he delivered him ten times. Intervened ten times. To the point of the firstborn being dead to each and every uh, Egyptian. From the Pharaoh down to the guy in jail. Even the animals, I think, firstborns. I'm not sure, don't quote me, but I think so. While his children in Goshen, the best of, of the land of Ramses, were doing fine. No harm. Not even the animals. Nothing. And after... After they showed these 10 miracles, guys, Moses takes him out, the shepherd takes him out through the desert, through the storms, through the scorpions and the snakes, 
Shoes never waxing old. God feeding him with manna from above. Gets him to the mount of the Lord, guys. They see the glory of God coming down on Sinai. Come on. After everything, guys. When God says, okay, now I want you to go in and obtain that promise. Of course there were giants in the earth. The Lord says there were giants in the earth in those days and what? And after that. There were still giants, guys. They were in the... You know why those giants were in uh, all of Israel that we know of today? Jerusalem, all of that area. You know why? Because the enemy didn't want Jesus coming. That's why. So he figured he put his big goons... I say that respectfully, Lord John. I hope I ain't getting out of line here, Lord. He put his big giants, let's call them, over there. His product of the fallen angels over there. That that's going to stop the Lord. They ain't going to stop the Lord. No. <laughs> no. So, the ten scouts, or the twelve scouts, are sent back. But first, let me get back to the mountain. They're in the mountain. Moses is going up to get the law, guys. He's going up to talk to the Almighty. Right? As he's coming down, because the Lord tells him, get down now, because they've already corrupted the way. They've already started. Moses had not even come down yet from the mountain, and they're already turned to idolatry. Aaron, and, you know, gee, Aaron, I know the Lord loves him, okay. But Aaron, he said, well, you know the people. Well, Aaron made this gold cow. This be our God. Oh, are you kidding me? This be the one that led us out of Egypt. A cow? Lord didn't like that. As a matter of fact, and I don't blame the Lord, and I'm not trying to get on his good side because I'm always trying to make him happy, okay? You don't think the Lord would have said, and he did say, he says, just move away, Moses. Just stand to the side there. I am going to get rid of them all. I'll make a mighty nation out of you. But Moses must have been something. I mean, guys, the Almighty buried him. He must have been something. And Moses stood in the gap. Who else do you know that was a very famous shepherd <laughs> that stood in the gap? Who do you know? I know you know, but I can't help myself. Who do you know that's a shepherd? I mean, this is, please forgive him. Put your name there, by the way. Please forgive John. Please forgive Amy. Because they just don't know what they're doing. And Moses did that, and so did Jesus. Stood in the gap. I'm going to go out on a... Please remember where I just left off. I have to do this. I do pray my, my son who's with me. I'm not going to tell you which son. But I have to say it. And I won't reveal names, but you know I have three sons, so it's one of those three, okay? I, I have to do it. Long time back, before we moved here. Boys will be boys, okay? Now, you always hope boys will be ministers. I have I have prayed for three, three ministers, three evangelists. I really did, guys. I truly did. The Lord's a witness on this. I was, um, I don't know if I just came out of the hospital or not, but one of the boys got real mad at me. It was something I said or something I did or I don't remember what it was. I really don't. And it's not important. I'm just trying to say something. I'm trying to get a point across. I will never tell the names. Okay. But one of the boys got real mad at me. 
and uh, for a moment, for a moment, I got angry. I got real angry for a moment, and I, I threw him out. And uh, I'm sitting in the house, and I'm watching this particular son. Okay, we we lived. Our house was level. Okay, you on a hill, Dave? No wonder you got problems. My house was level, but there the driveway goes up like this. Okay, in front of the two kitchen windows, and things got heated. And I kicked him out, and he was walking up and down that driveway. And I was watching him, but I was so angry. At the same time, I loved the kid. And uh, I just basically wanted him to apologize. That was not called for. <laughs> you know what I mean? I also went outside, and what made it even worse is... Um, Everybody knew that I had a call in my life for tw at least 20 years. Everybody knew that the Lord, because I, what do you think? You, you get taken up on high, you're going to tell somebody about it. Am I right? And I'm not trying to boast about that. It's just what the Lord did. And everybody knew I was called to be a prophet, even though I'm probably the clumsiest prophet, clumsiest prophet you've ever seen. And even I think it's kind of funny sometimes. I'm just hoping it works out at the end. You know, latter house being better than a former. Um, but we we wound up in the front of the building. And there's houses and uh, complexes all over. I mean, apartment buildings too. I mean, they're just all over the place. And they echo. There was an echo if you if you just talk loud enough. And he couldn't help himself. He was angry. And as loud as he could, he kept saying, you're a false prophet. You're just a false prophet. You're no prophet. You know, all the things that you don't want to hear and you definitely don't want your neighbors hearing, okay? It hurt me. Okay. And it also got me angry. And I was trying to be, I was trying to be calm. I really was. But he was upset. So when I kicked him out, and I did, I didn't want to, but I did at that moment. Shut the door, and I just would watch him going up and down that driveway. Because right in front is where our kitchen was, and the big window. So I could watch him going up and down that driveway, up and down. And probably he was wondering where he was going at that point, because he had no place really to go. But then there was another son. And this one came to me and he begged, he says, Dad, you know, you got to forgive him. He was standing in the gap, guys. He said, please forgive him, Dad. You know, he didn't know what he was saying. You know, he's your son. You don't want to do that. You know, just give him another chance. Okay, you're hearing me on this? Well, my heart kind of softened up. And um, eventually we resolved everything and he came back in. I don't know how much the neighbors heard. <laughs> and, but you got to understand something. I was angry. I was just livid. And I, I threw him out. I said, that's it. You know, no. But because somebody stood there and says, look, you don't want to do this. Come on. No. Lord wouldn't want you doing this, Dad. <laughs> so <laughs> you gotta forgive. And so and that's what eventually did. I can't remember exactly the words, but that's what did it. So what I'm trying to say is you don't think the Lord God was livid when they built a cow out of gold, put it on that uh altar that they they put together and then they, they then they were saying this be our god that took us out of egypt are you kidding me but then that shepherd 
And he must have been something just like Jesus. Stood right in the gap. And he says, please don't, you know, you don't want the Egyptians saying that you brought them all the way out here just to, just to do away with them, wipe them out. Please forgive them. Somebody stood in the gap. Somebody stood there and begged for mercy for them. Sound like anybody we know? Forgive them for they know not what they do. You can be sure that those words were never so truer than that because they had no idea. Guys, they had no idea who they were putting on that cross. And just like the apostle said, had they known who it was, they would have never done it. Had they known. And they weren't supposed to. Otherwise, there'd be no salvation for the Jews. I mean, for the, for the Gentiles. Remember, the message was rejected by the Jews went to the Gentiles. But the Jews are all going to be saved. And don't worry about it. Now listen up. So we got a clear image about how the Lord stood in the gap for man and gave him the Holy Spirit to bring us back to the garden again. But might I share again? I know we left there at the, at the, uh, at the mountain of God. Now, after they were forgiven, and he had to go up for another 40 days to get two new tablets. Fact is, came a time when they were charged to go in. Moses chose 12 of them, like we said. A one from each tribe, go in, scout the land. And remember, there were giants even after that time. And they were big. I don't know how big they were, but then they were big. They, I don't think they were 450 feet, but they could have been no doubt 100 feet. Because what did the Lord, you know why I know they're 100 feet? <laughs> why, brother Dave, you just go on, do you tell us? Because I'll tell you why. God said so. God says, didn't I not destroy, and he named the group, out of that land who were as high as the cedars. You know how high those cedars are? Over 100 feet. Do you think maybe you could understand why the children of Israel, the ten tribes anyway, says they looked at us like we were grasshoppers. And we looked at that act like them and felt like grasshoppers. And I and you imagine, look down on a grasshopper. Can you imagine? Well, they came back, all twelve of them. Now Joshua and Caleb, again, they had to have been something. Joshua and Caleb say, Oh, we can take we can take them. We can we can do this. The Lord God said it's ours, it's ours. What's the doubt? Right? Uh, keep that in mind later references, guys, when you're coming up against things against you, even these, even spiritual wickedness in the air. Remember, that's another form of giant. Be brave. Be bold. Be strong. Now listen. Ten of them said, no, it ain't happening. Caleb and Joshua said, or Caleb and Joshua said, oh yeah, we can do this. But because the other ten came back with an evil report and says, oh no, and they spread that fear. Those ten spread that fear. It was like a cancer. Went right through the entire uh, uh, nation that came out of Israel. I mean, out of Egypt. Because of that, only two, two, you could count them in a child's hand. Two. Two actually entered into that promised land that God promised. But the entire nation saved the children. They were just little toddlers. But the entire nation that originally was brought out showed everything, I mean signs that we can't even comprehend. That originally that original nation died in the desert and not one of them entered into the promised land, saved to Caleb and Joshua because they believed what God, the Almighty, had said. So they got their inheritance. They got their rewards, guys. They entered into that promised land. And all the children that came out of Egypt were then in their 40s, just like their parents were. And they went in and possessed the promised land.
Faith obtains the promises. Faith. You got to believe him. You got to take him at his word, guys. Having said that, okay, there's a reason why I went there. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish this train of thought up before we go to back to Jude. God sent his son. He lived a sinless life. Born under the law, kept the law spotless. Was born by a woman. That be Mary. Lived a life as a man. No sin. The spirit without measure. Took the sins of the world upon him. And he set every single predestinated individual that was ever supposed to be saved free. He paid the price for his brothers, his sisters, his mothers, his friends, and especially those that loved him. That's what he did on that tree. He had the power to lay it down. He had the power to pick it back up. He chose to lay it down. When you believe that, then what's it say? What we've been covering, guys, he went up. He sent the Spirit down. That's him and the Father making the abode with the believer. And through him, we are conformed. We are changed from glory to glory. More like him, less like the world. We're filled with the Holy Ghost of promise through him. Guys, your bodies then become temples. The very, the very presence that was lost in the garden has been found. I gave him back something that I never took away. The very innocence that was in the garden has been found. My people shall never be ashamed. The very presence that dwelt between those two cherubims on that mercy seat dwells in you. And no, unlike the Ark of the Covenant where there were stony tablets, God says, I'm going to turn your stony tablet, your stony heart, into a fleshly heart. I'm going to write these things across your heart and in your soul. You understand what I'm saying? And that manna, that's Christ from above. The very presence that led the children of Israel out of Egypt is the very presence that God says, I'll give each one a deposit. And before you go on your missions, it'll be all there, whatever you're supposed to do. You're sealed. That's the promise. Don't be like the people of Egypt that came out. Not everybody came out of Egypt were of the faith of Abraham. And none of those that were called entered in because they didn't believe it. Think about this. You know the first batch that came out of Egypt were all circumcised? All the, all the seed of Abraham? Did you know that? Yeah. When they all died in the desert, do you know that the second set that entered into the promised land were not? Yeah. He went to his own, and his own rejected him. Therefore I will turn and be a light unto the Gentiles, the Lord said. By faith we enter in. Not by keeping the law. Circumcision represents the law. Can't be saved by it. The uncircumcision received the promises of Abraham through faith believing what God had did on that cross. We reach for it, guys. We hope in it. We, we cleave to it. We want it. Okay. Lord, if you want to give it to us, I, I personally, I personally say, Lord, I'm an open vessel, Lord. Pour as much as you want in there, Lord, and call me to walk in your ways. I say praise the Lord, don't you? Anyway, let's get back, okay? Alright, I'm sorry. I, I go there a lot. I'm sorry. Alright. Even as... Now, this is verse 7. 
in course Jude is just one chapter anyway so just go to verse 7 even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh are set forth for an example suffering the vengeance of eternal fire likewise also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh despise dominion and speak evil of dignities Sodom and Gomorrah were left as examples, guys, of what not to do. Everything that we read in those lists of the flesh, that's what they were doing. And then some, probably. God saying, that is being left as an example of what not to do. That is also a message to the pastors. This is what you should be preaching, what not to do. Not that you have an excuse to do. The Lord is not happy with that, okay? All right, uh, verse 10. But these speak evil of these th those things which they do not know, but what they know naturally as brute beasts in those things that they corrupt themselves. <clears throat> Some of the first things that we have to understand as Christians when we go to the Lord, we're asking for forgiveness for our sins. Those sins are the deeds of the flesh. Those lists we discuss, we're asking forgiveness for them. If the Lord is gracious enough to forgive you for those sins, okay, and it's going to cause you to walk in His ways, you're not supposed to be going back to Egypt. You're not supposed to be visiting Sodom and Gomorrah. You're not supposed to be eating that fruit no matter how good it looks. And you definitely don't believe the lies of the serpent that says, oh, you won't die. You're still going to be saved. Remember, you're under grace. You're at liberty. You're justified. Really? Again, Paul Bromley, B-R-O-M-E-L-Y. Look at the teaching, and you tell me really after that. All right. Verse 12. These are spots in your feast of charity when they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear. Clouds they are without water, carried about of winds, trees whose fruit withered without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots. The body without the spirit is dead, being left alone. If the fruit is withered, that means it's no good. How do we know the trees? There are trees with good fruit, there are trees with bad fruit. If the trees with bad fruit is dead from the roots. The fruit's dead, the tree's dead, and when it dies completely, it's the first death. The second death is because you never knew the Lord. A child could count them. Again, raging waves of the sea foaming out their own shame. What was, what was brought into the garden after they disobeyed? Shame. Wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness and darkness forever. 15. To execute judgment upon all and to convince all of their ungodly, uh, all that are ungodly among them of their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and all of their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. Don't stand up pastors, reverends, deacons, evangelists and say that Jesus paid not only for all of our sins. That part's true. Do you remember the serpent in the garden? That part is so true that he did pay for all of our sins in the garden. But he didn't, he didn't pay the price so you can continue in it. You understand? It may look good to you when they all, all praise grace and you know, we're justified of all things. That sounds like a cloak of, uh, of convenience to me. Oh, we're at liberty, guys. Read John 1.8. If you're not a sinner, then you're not saved. What? You understand? If you don't confess you're a sinner and you're saved by mercy, you're not saved. What? How about you confess you're a sinner, what you've done, ask the Lord to forgive you of all your sins, fill you with the Holy Spirit of promise, which is the Father and the Son in the believer, which the Holy Ghost prays for us when we need it, causes us to walk in His ways, inherited the promises of righteousness through faith. 
We want to cease to be what we were so we don't become the things we fear the most. Right? And we don't receive that reward that Sodom and Gomorrah received. Right? Um, these are murderers. These are complainers walking after their own lusts, and their mouth speaks great swelling words, having men's person in admiration because of advantage. But, beloved, remember you the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus the Christ, how that they told you that there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lust. Guys, underline that. These be they who separate themselves sensual, having not the spirit. Verse 23, And others saved with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. What are all the things I just read? Those are things pertaining to the flesh. All those lists through all these tapes. Remember I told you, don't do this, don't do that. These are the commandments of the Lord. These are the things that hurt. These are the things that can destroy you. Do you want to keep that oil in those lamps? Five virgins were very wise. They kept that oil right where it was. They asked the Lord to keep it at full tap and that candle burning bright, that wick burning bright within them. They were ready when the Lord opened that door. The other five virgins were foolish. They let their oil run out. The wick went dry because they were living in a world and it went dry. Even spotted by the flesh. You don't want your robe spotted by anything. Not even a breath stain. Having said that. Okay. I want to encourage you. That everything we've covered up to this point. For 77 tapes before this guys. Was trying. I tried my best. And I asked the Lord every time. I tried to go. And do the best I could. Walk in the spirit. And you won't fulfill the desires of the flesh. Seek the Lord and live. Ask the Lord to walk out his life. Through the Holy Spirit. Ask the Holy Spirit to pray and make intercession for you. When you feel fear is coming on. Or pain is coming on. Or you being just darted by the enemy. Or this going on. Saying that you're not going to be saved. Don't you believe it. You hold true to the promises. Don't be like the. The first batch that came out of Israel, guys, unbelieving, fearful of the giants ahead or the creatures that were produced by them. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, guys. We really don't. We do wrestle not just with people who are possessed by those self-same spirits of the air that are the children of disobedience poking at those that are the children of obedience. But we also wrestle against things we can't see. Things we can't understand, but we know they exist through faith. These are those self-same giants that when they died in the creations they created that died, had no place to go, whether up or down. They are in the air. They are those demonic entities. They are those voices you may hear. They are not ghosts. They are not ETs. And they certainly ain't your mom or dad from the past. They're deceivers. They're tricksters. They want to deceive and tell you lies just like they tried to do to Eve and it succeeded. They chose the wrong tree. Jesus says he's the right tree. And I'm telling you as a witness of his, he is the right tree. And if you want to have right to that tree, if you want that communion back with the Father, you want that innocence that was lost, you want that veil to be ripped away so you can see the glory of the Father and the love of the Son, the communion of the Holy Spirit, the presence that went over the trees in the garden. Do you want that? Do you really want that? Then ask him into your heart. Ask him to cause you to walk in his ways. Ask him to save your soul. You have only one, guys. And he went through a lot to save it. Ask him to cause you to do the right thing day by day. And if you're in doubt, then you say in the name of Jesus, I bind this thing on earth. I bind it in heaven in the name of the Lord Jesus and I throw it out in the name of the Lord Jesus. You understand what I'm saying? And don't let the darts of the enemy scare you. The very fact that he's throwing darts at you, well, could be because 
God ordained you to life. It knows it ain't going to see anything that's pleasant. It knows it's not going to receive life. It knows it has a short time. And it knows where it's going. But guys, you have the power right now. Listen to me now. Listen to me. And then I have to say goodbye again. Tell section C. Listen to me. Listen to me really good. You right now. Whoever's listening to this. I might not even be in the country when this gets to the people it's supposed to get. You have two trees before you right now, guys. Two of them. You have the tree of knowledge of good and evil, of which will destroy you. Remember Sodom and Gomorrah. Or you have the tree of life, which is on the other side. I believe they're right in the same place. Next door, maybe they want another. It makes no difference. The fact is they're both in the midst of the garden. That tree gives eternal life. That tree is Christ himself. Choose wisely. Until I get the revelation in the next section, I bid you a blessing. Go have lunch. Finish this up whenever you can. God bless.